Hey, teacher, how are you? Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Perfect. We're going to wait just a few minutes for the rest of the people to come. Okay. Nice. The last Friday, I couldn't uh, stay at the class because I had uh, something to do. Okay, no worries. Uh, I don't know if you were able to see the video. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, hello everybody, welcome to the class. We're gonna start and uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Good evening, Ana Claudia. Okay, we're gonna check about the platform first as we usually do. Let's see. So it's this one, the class of today. We finish on Wednesday, which is going to be very good. And remember that we need to finish the whole platform tomorrow place okay. it's very very important okay very good and uh, we're going to then check the attendance for today ah that's Susana Cáceres Mendoza I know you're busy don't worry Ana Claudia González Velázquez present teacher good Dani Josué García Martínez present good Fernando Marvin González Martínez. 
Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Good, got it. Okay, perfect. So we're going to start the class of today. Uh, we, the last class, we were talking about questions, questions that are made in an interview. So how can we answer? How can we improve that kind of things? So we're going to continue with that, actually. Uh, I hope that the ones that didn't come, you saw the video. If you didn't, but you have the time, of course. And uh, we're going to start with that then. So let's see how it goes. First of all, we're going to watch a video, OK? And uh, of course, uh, you are going to tell me any opinions, anything that, like a comment that you want to say about it, OK? So here we go. So tell me about yourself. I um... So, tell me about yourself. Well, I... I like, um... Hmm... So tell me about yourself. Can I call a friend? You submitted the resume, and you waited, and you waited patiently, and finally, you got that phone call, and now you got the interview. You're sitting across the table, and the hiring manager smiles and asks you the question, Tell me about yourself. And you panic, and you don't know what to do, and you don't know what to say. You start to stutter, and halfway through the conversation, you say to yourself, Ugh, I blew it, why did I even say that? You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Usually, that hiring manager makes up his or her mind in the first three minutes during the interview. Do you make a good impression? So today I'm going to share with you from a CEO perspective, from a hiring manager perspective, from an employer perspective, what is the best response to the question, tell me about yourself. You see, we have interviewed thousands and thousands of potential applicants, and I cannot tell you how many times I see people kind of struggle with this question. But however, there are incidents that we are very impressed with the response. This is not theory. We have taken some of the best replies, some of the best responses to this question. I'm gonna teach it to you. And by the end of this video, you're gonna walk away with the exact formula, exactly what do you need to say and how to say it. I'm also gonna give you a little script, a little template. So next time when you are asked this question, you know exactly what to say. And now, let me give you a couple keys first. Key number one. When the hiring manager is asking you the question, tell me about yourself, they are not actually asking about your whole life story. They are not asking about your parents, your, your background, and, and your dog's name, and what, what, what kind of cat do you have. It is not about that. So when people hear that question, they think, oh, let me tell you my life story and 20 minutes into it, you have not talked about anything important. So what they're actually asking is, what are you bringing to the table? So from now on, when you hear the question, tell me about yourself. I want you to make the mental switch. That equals, what value could you bring to the company? What problems can you solve for the company? That's what they are asking. 
and you shouldn't go on and on and on about all your background and all of that. No, don't do that. Key number two, be yourself, but be your best self. See, one of the mistakes people make is they believe in an interview. Well, you know, I just want to be myself. Yes, you want to be yourself, but you want to be your best self. You want to be authentic. You don't want to be fake. But it doesn't mean that you just share everything. This is the first time you just sitting across the table from a hiring manager. It's like a date, right? You just get to know each other. This is like a coffee date. So make sure that you present your best self, right? Lead with your strong foot forward. So when they are asking you the question, everything that you share, any statement that you make, you always want to tie it back to what's in it for them. W I I F M. What's in it for them? So let me give you an example. Let's say someone is hiring and you're applying for a social media manager position. Okay, and the hiring manager is asking you, "Well, so tell me about yourself." A typical response. Someone might say, "Well, you know, I um, I, 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 I grew up with social media, and um, I've used social media for a long, long time, my whole life, actually. So I'm very familiar with it. And just about three years ago, and I thought to myself, hey, you know, maybe I could actually make a living doing this. So I started playing around with it, and um, you know, take on a couple of clients here and there, and I've worked with a with a couple of people, uh, and then." And now, you know, I'm I'm planning to get married, and my fiance, you know, told me that you know I should get a, a stable job. So here I am, and uh, I'm looking for a company uh, that offers a good, you know, growth potential, a good growth opportunity, and also this this place is you know not too far from my home, so it's good. It's only a 10-minute drive. You see the problem? Like that, it's all me, 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 me. It's all about that person, what they need, and all of that stuff. Bad idea. Now, how do you feel if you are the hiring manager? When you ask that question, comment below if that's the answer that you get. So instead of rambling on about that, about my background and all this stuff, what I want, no. If you are turning into a benefit, what's in it for them? What's in it for the company? What's in it for the hiring manager? What could you say? I'm going to give you a simple formula. Write this down. Three S. Three S. First, success. Now here's a script that you could use. I have been blank, or my background is blank. So let me demonstrate. Let's say it's the same position, social media manager that you're applying. So first, success. I have been. I've been doing social media for the last three years, and I specialize in helping companies and entrepreneurs growing their Facebook fan page. And in the last three years alone, I've helped dozens of clients in over ten different industries. And on average, I've been able to help my clients to really increase the engagement and grow their fan page by three to five hundred percent in less than. Six months, and that's what I am passionate about. In fact, I have listed some of those clients that I've worked with in the reference letter. You see how that works? You're talking about your success, but without bragging. It's more to demonstrate and showcase your skill set. What are you good at? That's step number one, success. And then step number two is strength. And here's the script. My strength is, or my real strength is, fill in the blank. My real strength is my ability to truly understand what your audience wants. I pride myself on my reputation to creating engaging and compelling content that I know your audience loves and want to share. That's the second step. My strength is blank. Third situation, meaning how does that apply to the position that you're applying? How do you apply your background, your strength into the new company, the new opportunity? Situation: What I am looking for is. What I am looking for is fill in the blank. 
What I'm looking for is a company that I could add value to, that I could produce a positive return on investment for, where I could join a strong team. Is this what ABC Company is looking for? You see, at the end, you ask a question. Whoever asks a question controls the conversation. So you want to ask a question, and then now the hiring manager would be like, okay, yeah, I guess that's what I'm looking for. No, that's not what we're looking for. And you go from there. Just because you are in an interview, it doesn't mean that you don't need to sell. Now, the next question you might have is, well, Dan, does that mean that I have to like memorize a script of some sort? The answer is absolutely yes. You don't want to go in unprepared. In fact, you want to write it out, practice it, rehearse it many, many times. So when you are in front of that potential hiring manager, you're ready to go. You need to memorize it and say it many, many times and repeat it many, many times so it comes across very, very natural. The last thing you want is to panic and stutter and you don't know what to say. You do not want to do that. If you find this video useful, comment below. If you want to equip yourself with practical business knowledge, if you want to learn how to communicate with conviction, so you can finally get the respect that you deserve and attain your goals, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so what did you get from the video? It's a, it's a good video. Okay, good. It's a good video. Um, I, I wrote you on, on the chat. Uh, if you could uh, share the... So tell me about yourself. The U URL, okay? Uh, yeah. The, the main things on this video, on, or, or on that video, is about uh, try to be, try to be uh, more natural when uh, a hiring manager is talking to you because uh, like uh, like the man said at the beginning uh, many people uh, they are like uh, too scared uh, and they do not know how to act and obviously how to talk with with these kind of people and there are some uh, managers who talk to you asking for your background, okay? But like the men say, it's not about your family or your personal background. It's about your <clears throat> your uh, background in, in the area where you are uh, working or where you are uh, developing your activities or your, or your work. And uh, um, what else? They mentioned about the about uh, three S. Okay, the first one was a uh, success. If I don't remember bad, yeah. the second the second one uh, uh, it was about. Uh, um, strength. Okay. Okay. Maybe that was a problem. Okay. Very good. Sorry. Sorry. I, I think I, I was mute. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I don't know what what did you what did you hear from me? Until strength. Okay, uh, the second one was about the strength, and the third one I don't remember. But um, the men said that uh, they or, or those kind those those kind of interview interviews are more like uh, about what. Uh, what could you do uh, to the to the enterprise to the to the company in order to uh, um, 
grow uh, their, uh, in this case, grow their, uh, their followers or something like that. But uh, in general, uh, it was about what do you have to, to be more, uh, how, I don't know how to say this, to more accurate, accurate in your work, uh, what what do you do in order to um, put your effort uh, and try to uh, to improve the actual situation? If you get, if you could get a um, pilot, okay. I I think uh, it was about the video. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. Yes, actually that is it, I mean, yeah, sometimes we're nervous, we were discussing that last class, uh, but we need to be ready, right? We need to, to know that we might be asked some things like this and we need to be ready on what to say or what the person that is in the interview wants to hear from us, right? So that is very important. Any other comments or any other opinion? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, the truth, uh, this is a really, and um, this is a really important uh, interview when you are looking for a job, and also it's a really good part because uh, I I guess that the interviewer uh, made uh, this question uh, because uh, wants to know uh, a lot of things or extra information about you when you are looking for a job. And also uh, this question is a part of uh, when you apply for, a, for another position in your job. And maybe you don't have to, to say a lot of things. You only have to make a little resume about uh, your life. And uh, like mm -hmm. he said, that we have to, to discuss uh, the, triple, the triple S, uh, success, strength, and situation. Uh, maybe to know if you are able to to develop a, uh, the responsibility for that position. Um, well, that's what I get. Very good, actually, it was very nice. Very good. So that is it. I mean, we need to understand the way that we're going to provide the information so uh, everybody in the interview knows that you are the right one, right? So that is it. And and something that maybe could be mentioned like extra is uh, when somebody made that question to you is to speak about your weakness, but not, not your really bad witness. It's not like uh, I'm so punctuality or something like that, that maybe uh, other people uh, doesn't have none. The other people don't have it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's like that. It's like selling yourself, right? You know, yeah. I, was, I was thinking whenever I was watching the video that it's very important because, mm -hmm. I mean, whenever you have any position, you will be part of the business and you will be able to, to as part of the business, a part of the company, mm -hmm. to sell the company at any time. So that's yeah. why it's important at the first impression that you will be able to sell yourself so they know that you can do exactly the same for the company. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. When, well, uh, I remember when I was a, a loyalty member team. Okay. Because uh, you have to sell the, the company. So in this case, you have to sell yourself. That is it. You need to yeah, sell. Yeah, that's right. That is it. Good, perfect. Thank you, Jose Wilfredo. Any other Hi, comments please? or opinion? I don't know if you hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I was Nobody trying can. some head heads headphones and, and I guess you couldn't hear me but um what I I was thinking why am I looking at until today this precious video because that is the first question they make to you in order to know about yourself always I was wrong thinking that they were looking like my personal background uh, because they wanted to establish like um like uh, your values values and yes they are looking your values but it's important to 
tie them to what they are looking for to the company, what we can bring it. And believe it or not, these um, type of videos are very, very helpful. In my case, I, I'm thinking in my, maybe if I want to move, to in, even though internally in my company, now I'm better prepared. This is like opening like a surprise box and the best you are prepared, the better you are prepared, the better possibilities are that you will get that position you're looking for. It's amazing. I like it a lot, this video. Perfect, thank you. So that is it, right? So, uh, you know, this is not part of what we're learning here in the English for work, but sometimes I like to bring these kind of topics because I know it's important. I mean, I know that we're here, yes, because we want to go to other countries and visit, but also whenever an opportunity comes, we need to be ready. So, and sometimes that might be possible in English, right? So it's going to be even better because now you know how it's going to be the situation. So it's very good. Any other comment or opinion? Okay, if not, we're going to continue. Remember that we were talking about uh, 35 questions about how to how to overcome uh, an interview in a very good way, right? So uh, the last one that we checked out to was number eight only. So let's see if we have the time today so we can um, do some interviews here live, right? So I just don't remember if we read this one or if we read, uh, I, I guess we didn't read this one, right? Not eight or nine. No, we didn't, teacher. We didn't, right? Okay. So we're going to read then this about uh, what are your salary requirements? In mind that one, there is a question that is also kind of common. How much would you like to earn? I mean, if you say too much, they will say, okay, this is a good candidate, but it's too much money, right? If you say too low, maybe they will say, okay, we can give them that money and the other people will earn more money. So that is not a good idea. Let's check how it goes. So, uh, Ana Claudia, could you please help me with this? Um, we are not able to hear right now. Do you hear me? And right now, yes. Ah, okay. Yes, I guess with the headphones, the, the microphone is not working. Okay. okay. What are your salary requirements? This is always a tricky question. You don't want to love all yourself but at the same time you don't want to be told no because you gave such an out out your out outrageous 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 number when answering keep these three things in mind what's the average salary for someone uh someone of your skill level second how much does the company pay employees of your skill level glass door should be super helpful uh, here and finally how much are you getting paid in your current company in most cases you can probably negotiate a pay bump from what you're currently getting and the final number wow <laughs> the final number you tell them should incorporate all three of the points we just mentioned do you know for a fact that the company is doing well and compensates employees accordingly, you'd quote a higher salary. If your skill level above, if is your skill level above average, this should be reflected in your salary. As a rule of thumb, you can figure out two numbers. What's the good scenario and what's the best scenario? Answer the interviews with your best pay and worst case scenario, they'll negotiate down. Or you can also answer with a range and change, uh, with, a, with all range and chains are, they'll pick the number somewhere in the middle. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, yes, this is a tricky question, but I think always I've been thinking this is a good tip, the number two, I guess, when it says that it's important to uh, take a look how much, not only the company, 
how much the all the companies in the same uh, um, area are paying what is the the average they are paying to a professional in your same level knowledge and in case you um offer an additional value an additional uh, knowledge so you can negotiate and put your uh, value or your expectations a little bit higher this is a good tip to have always we think naturally we have we must have the best scenario and the worst scenario and in this case it says we must have the the best and the better so we can negotiate with the better in case it's not working we always keep the best and that's a good tip very good, perfect. Yes, actually, it's a very good thing, right? So, and this is a question that might be come up. So, in the interview, mm -hmm. so we need to be ready. Uh, we cannot say, well, whatever. How much is the salary you're paying? I mean, no, we mm -hmm. need to be ready with a number that is not too high, not too low. But in that case, we need to research. Actually, I believe mm -hmm. it's a question that they ask you not only because they want to know your expectation, but also to know if you have researched before, right? Mm hmm. Good, perfect. So, and there are a couple of uh, words here, I guess. Let me just know. Low ball. What is low ball? Mm, I guess it's like, uh, I'm not sure if it's like going back. Like uh, I was telling you, we normally think the best, the good, and the worst. And sometimes, uh, mm, we will be negotiation, negotiating like uh, the same uh, salary we're earning maybe in, a, in the current company. I don't know if it's, that is. Yeah, yeah, actually I mean, something um, like that. Go ahead. Teacher, global in this context is like uh, you will be uh, low pay than others. That is it. So if you say a number that is too low, they might say, okay, yeah, that's good, man. Lower that, than the media? Something like that, yeah. It's uh, like okay. lowering your expectation, let's say. Hmm. Okay. Like, and, like uh, under underestimate your, uh, your salary, your payment. Uh -huh. That is it. So you are okay. underestimating your what you can do, your skills, right? Okay. Good. The other word is outrageous. What is outrageous? I've seen that, but I don't know. What's the meaning? Maybe okay. sometime bigger or higher than uh, in this context, okay? <clears throat> Maybe uh, some uh, um number who is higher than the than the media or or even uh, higher than uh, than the company could pay you definitely that is it a is something that is in a higher level too high right so okay nice and the two uh, possible be, answer. Uh, go ahead could be unreachable unreachable it might be it's too high maybe too difficult to reach Good. And there are two examples. My salary expectation is around. So around might be good. Uh, or you, the second one, I guess, is better. My salary requirement is between 30,000 and 40,000 range annually. So that is also a good tip. So you go straight to the point and you say between this and this, I'm good. Right. Okay. The next question is, do you have any questions for us? Mm, okay. That is a good one. That is going to be for Heidi. We cannot hear you, Heidi. Not at all. That's kind of strange. 
Maybe the update of Zoom is affecting something. We cannot hear you. Okay, no worries. So, uh, Jose Wilfredo, could you please help me with this? Okay, teacher. Uh, do you have any question for us? You'll hear this question in our interview. You will attempt. Well, there isn't a right answer. There is a wrong answer. Yep, all good things. I'll go show myself how. Instead, with this question, you want to show your enthusiasm about the company. Imagine they've already hired you and you're starting tomorrow. What would you like to know about them? Keep in mind, though, that the question shouldn't be too easy. So what does your company do? Other than showing the recruitment, the recruiter that you are really interested in working for them, this is your opportunity to really find out more about the is and outs of the place. The answers you get from the interview work could also be an indicator of whatever you really want to work there or not. So what kind of question can you ask? Here are okay. some of the most essential ones. Okay, so what did you get from this? Uh, well, in this case, it's like, um, um, this paragraph or this part is for something like question that maybe the interviewer uh, make and also you have to to demonstrate your enthusiasm to be in on the company and also i guess that it's really important maybe uh, make some question like what are they looking for? Like maybe you are enthusiastic and you could say, and you are looking at an enthusiastic uh, uh, person for this position. Yes, maybe the interviewer could say yes. So you could sell your. So mm -hmm, something like that. Perfect. So yes, actually every question is. Uh, is uh, it's an opportunity for you to show uh, the interest to, for you to sell yourself. So this is, if somebody asks you, do you have any questions for us? It's not a good idea to say, no, everything is fine. There are always questions, right? But there are some questions here that we can ask in my I think, teacher, I think, huh? teacher, that sometimes we are like they use is, I don't know if it's something cultural, that we think that if we ask to the other one that is uh, to whom I apply in to work is because I need that job. It's like um, making a wrong thing. And looking at this, the wrong thing is not to ask anything. So that is true. Sometimes, I mean, here in Latin America, that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody has okay. says, do you have questions? And you say, no, no. And when you go home, you say, I don't know what is the schedule like? Um, is there going to be a cafeteria so I can eat there or I need to go out? Many things that you can ask. So, of course, there are questions that are more relevant than others. So, here is a list of some questions that we can ask. For example, what does a regular day in this company look like? Um, I don't like that that much. What's the best thing about working for the company? I like this one. What's the worst thing about working at the company? Mm, maybe not. What would you say are the biggest challenges a person in this position might face? That is a good one. I like that one. What are the most important skills and qualities one must have to succeed in this position? Mm, I don't like that either. What do you like best about working in this company? That is a good one. What are the most pressing issues and projects that need to be addressed? Mm, maybe. Do you have training programs available to employees? That is a good one. What sort of budget is there for my department? Mm, maybe not good. What kind of opportunities do you have for future development? That is a good one. What are the performance expectations for someone in this position? It might be. 
Do departments usually collaborate with one another? Mm, I don't think that's a good way. I mean, every department has to collaborate, right? Do you celebrate birthdays or retirement in the office? Maybe depends on the position, right? Do you, uh, employees uh, usually hang out with each other outside of work? Mm, no, I don't think it's a good question. Is there anything else I can help you with at this stage? Mm, might be. What is the next step in the hiring process? That is a good question. So not all the questions here are good, but it's a good idea for you to have like two or three in case, right? In case you want to know exactly what's going on there. So let's move on. Says number 10, what are you looking for for in any position? So Raymond, could you please help me reading this one? Ramon. Not possible, okay. Um, let's see, Yvonne, is it possible for you? Jose Osmin. Not possible, Giselle. Yes, I'm here. Okay, please, the number 10. Okay, what are you looking for in a new position? The easiest way to answer this question will be to simply say that you are looking for whatever the company is offering. Look at the front, uh, sorry, look at it from the point of view of the potential employee, employer. Will they hire someone if they answer this question with a good salary? And uh, well, that's about it. This answer pretty much says that the moment they get a higher paying offer, they're going to jump ship. Instead, explain to the interviewer that this job at this company is the perfect fit for you. Mention what your short term, mention what your short term and long term career goals are and how this position ties to them. What do you get from this? Mm -hmm that you, you, you don't have just to say that, that, that you want the job because of the money. Uh, that, that's why it's important you have to make a, a previous research about the company maybe, so you can match um, that information with, with what you are looking for. So uh, like this, like the, Little example, example in the in the in, in the paragraph set, uh, you can tell that you want to work for them because I don't know they are the best. Uh, you can be your best with this company. So growth with the company. So you 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 just don't talking about the money. They're talking about the company itself. So maybe that. Very good, perfect, that was it. I mean, yes, we need to be ready about this one. And I, I mean, you need to tell that you really like the position, that you are ready for the position, that you like the company and that you want to build a career. Maybe that is very important as well. So good. Possible answer says, I'm looking for four, apply my machine learning skills that I have developed during my two plus years. Uh, of work at any company. There I used to do programmatic ads model design. Now I'm looking for an opportunity to work on a larger scale project that involves setting uh, programmatic ads for audiences of more than 10 million people. I believe that work uh, with such a large scale project will allow me to progress significantly faster in my career. So this is a good one because you're saying that if you give me the chance, I will help the company and you are going to help me growing uh, in my developer development as a professional and things like that. So it's a win-win situation. And that is what they are actually looking for. Good. Number 11. Are you considering other positions in other companies? Mm, that is interesting. Juan Miguel. Okay. <clears throat> Number 11. Are you considering other positions in other companies? It is a tricky one. How much do how much does the HR manager need to know here? 
if you admit to having interviews with other companies, it might look like you're not 100% dedicated to this one. On the other hand, if you say you're not considering other positions, it might, it might make you seem like you don't have other options and the company has the upper hand in salary negotiations. The right way to go about here is to find common ground between the two answers. The interviewer is probably asking because they want to know whether they have competition in hiring you. They also want to know if you are serious about the industry and are, and are legitimately looking to be employed in this field of work. If you do have other interviews lined up for other companies, express that you are keeping your options open, but that your favor this job in comparison to the others. Don't have many other options, stick to the same approach. Whatever you do, don't make it seem like you're desperate or that you don't have any other options. Okay, what do you get from this? Mm. Um, first of all, I think uh, is this reading is more applied to, to other countries, but not in, in ours because uh, many uh, hiring managers, uh, they could ask these questions, but if you mention that you have your options open, uh, they might uh, think that you are not uh, only with this company or only with the company that you are being interviewed. So maybe they can't, uh, they can't take you seriously, okay? Um, I had the experience uh, with this kind of, of uh, question and my, my answer was like, I have, I have, no other options, okay? But uh, I think this is, uh, uh, for that company, this is uh, the best op option for me. So the hiring manager asked ask, uh, ask me, um, uh, you have another option. So uh, you, you do your moves because of the money. They, they told me this. And obviously, uh, sometimes it's for the money, but sometimes, uh, obviously, you are looking for a, a better environment. Uh, but um, it's kind of, uh, maybe it's kind of serious, uh, or it's kind of complicated answering this this uh, this question. I think that you can or you have to to explore also the the people or the person who is talking to you in order to try to understand and try to um, uh, how to say this. Como um, como entenderlo. Like, uh -huh. Okay, uh, I don't know how to say this. Uh, like, entender a la persona o como mirar qué tan abierta es. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Okay. So it's like, yeah, yeah, look at the people that are interviewing you and try to read them. So uh -huh. them. yeah, yeah. I, I, I was trying to, do, to, to, to say this. Uh -huh in order to, uh, uh, to make your answer, your best answer, okay? Not in, you know, not trying to be rude, but not trying also to be like, okay, I'm here and do whatever you want, okay? Very good. Yeah, actually that is it. I mean, these tips are good and I believe that they are very nice because they are in the middle or they give you some tips that are very nice. But you are right sometimes, depending on the situation, the company, uh, 
maybe you decide to to open more or to be more like close. So that is very important. Okay, and there are some possible answers. Uh, I have two. I have had two interviews during the past week with the companies X and Y industries. However, I'm very passionate about both your industry and the work you have done during the past several years. I am more inclined towards working for you if everything works out. This is a good one. Now yet, I wasn't really actively looking for a job until my friend, and the name, recommended your company. I'm not looking for just any company. I'm interested in an interesting, engaging project such as yours. I like both. Both answers are very good. Like, yeah, I could check. I, I mean, the first one is very like, yes, I went to this and this, but this company, your position, what you are offering me, is what I really need. And the other one actually is a very good one. I was not looking for a job, but I mean, I, I have research about this company and it's amazing. So I would like to be part of it. For me, the first one is more polite. And the second one is more like uh, to, to make yourself kind of mysterious, or I don't know how to say, um, in order to uh, telling people that you are not moving everywhere and just for the salary. You're moving because you want to improve your situation, obviously your work situation and trying to be uh, the best of yourself in order to, to increase the satisfaction or whatever in, in the new company, okay? Perfect, yeah, actually, as I was telling you, there are good tips. I mean, there are things that depending on what you want to, to do, you can be ready on those things. Nice. Okay, the question number 12 says, what is the professional achievement you're most proud of? Mm, a good one. Danny, this is for you. Yeah, sure. Um, what is the professional achievement you're most proud of? Um, this is another version of the why should we hire you question, but with a focus on one very specific achievement. Achievement. Um, this is one pretty straightforward. Um, just mention your number one professional achievement and your and your good good to go um, as a given your achievement had to be related to the job you're applying for let's say you're applying for the position of sales manager in correct example i'm very good at underwater basket weaving having woven 20 plus basket in the past year. Correct example. In my previous sales position, I managed to hit and exceed department KPIs by 15% plus uh, for six months in a row. Keep in mind though, that you want to be very specific with your answer. To get this right, try using the STAR method. It goes something like this. S, situation. Set the scene, the scene and context. T, task. Describe what your challenge or responsibility was. A, action. List and 12. 12, 12 12 on all the all the action you took towards addressing the challenge or responsibility R result Ex explain what the outcomes were and how they fit with the overall goal of the project or or company so Find a work-related achievement that showcases your contribution through 
your skills and experience to something that matter the company to the company. Okay, what do you get from this? Um, this is a very very important. I think is the is one of the main question that an interviewer uh, could could make you because um, they want to know um, the the things you are achieved, but the most a important achieve for for you right and and you you don't have to to give a bad response i i i think you have to 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 give the the best response you can and and this and this uh, and this give a a method like metal, star metal, with a zin, with a task, and the action and the result. I think it's very, very powerful, this method, because you are, um, you are um, described very, very well, and with numbers. I, I think, I, uh, I, I want an example, uh, or um, situation that you want to describe, like an um, achieve it has you have to be with numbers how uh, the, the the state a change to state b and um, and that's it okay very good very good so actually you're right this is very important because i mean it's talking about your achievements and uh, you don't need to go and explain a lot of things the star method actually is good for that one for you to be specific but don't miss anything that is important so if you follow this kind of method not only for this question but for other questions that might be significant uh, yeah you will be able to provide a very good response so you are going to demonstrate in the interview that you are ready for the challenge right oh this is kind of long so let's see uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Maria Alejandra. Okay. <clears throat> My biggest achievement. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. My biggest achievement is the fact that I went from being being a intern to managing companies X, enter marketing marketing over two years. As an inter, I basically had zero instructions on what to do. It went like we can learn social media advertising and getting going. The founder didn't exactly expect, expect me to uh, achieve much and didn't particularly care as they were 100% focused on making the product work. Instance of just complaining about a lack of direction, I started reading of a digital marketing, pretty much anything I could get my hands on. I learned how to do content marketing, for example, from Nate Farrell blog, and I started putting everything into practice. My first success was getting an article to go viral, gen generating, viral. viral, generating over 5,000. 5,000 re revenue is a single day. While that's not much for a software company, it left like a lot of for an intern. After that, the funding team gave me, gave me a lot more trust and assigned me a small marketing budget for 1,000 per month. With a lot of more confidence in my ability, I started exper experimenting with other strategies. 
then over the next two years, I got to move to be to head of marketing after making a couple of parts. I managed to scale up our marketing effort, growing the company for 2,000 to 3,000 monthly recurring revenue. Okay, so uh, what is your opinion about this one, Maria Alejandra? Um, I think that the, if the company don't prove and your work is very difficult that you demonstrate what, how to do with our two abilities. And if you don't try or you don't try to change or move for say like this, uh, maybe I think that in the, uh, or the actual company, the, don't value your job is your need to move or to explore your abilities in the other company and maybe the experience that better compare and you feel more comfort comfortable with your work and you and I think that only that I think that that depends that the company is doing your work and maybe I need to uh, move different pieces that you're combining. Uh, you're combining. Okay, very good. Yes, actually, maybe I, the only thing is that I believe that it's a little bit long. Maybe the introduction doesn't have to be that long, but whenever he starts, uh, the person starts speaking about uh, the uh, money and how he was higher and increased the growing of the company. I mean, very important. The other one is not that long, says my greatest accomplishment so far is graduating from University X within four years with a GPA of 3.9. My family wasn't able to support me financially. So I had to take care of all the university bills on my own. Through hard work and dedication, I ended up graduating with almost no student loans. I managed this through a combination of working part-time while studying, doing seasonal full-time work during the summer, mining a high CGPA and winning two scholarships over four years. Okay, so this is more like for people that do not have experience, right? Of course, uh, you need to be aware on, on what you did or what is you're going to say that, that is true, but it's like for, for that kind of things. Uh, well, we're going to stop for a while and we're going to check the attendance because it's nine already. Let's see. Ada, Susana Cáceres, Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Sumaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. Sulema Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Good, got you. Okay, so let's continue then with this topic that is kind of long, but it's also kind of interesting. 
let's see. Okay, so what kind of work environment do you like best? This is for Fernando. Okay, teacher. What kind of work environment do you like best? The eye of this question is to assess whether you'll fit in the company's working environment. For example, some organizations are pretty structured and hierarchical. 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 Huh? Hierarchical. They require tight organization and have a well planned day filled with rules and guidelines on how to do things. If you are the creative, think out of the box type who likes to break the rules and innovate. This is probably not going to cut if for you. On the other hand, some companies are more laid back with a lot less um, bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, huh? Bureaucracy, okay. Go get, go get as more sales. Can actually be your main duty for the week if you are working in an early stage startup. If you are the type who prefers to have a strict to dust and objectives, you probably won't enjoy such a job. So the takeaway, different people work best in different environment, and that's okay. Before you go to the interview, go through the company's website and social media page to get a sense of the general buy and environment there. Look at the employee reviews on Glassdoor, or if you know someone already working there, ask them. Depending on what you learn, answer accordingly. Okay, what do you get from this? Uh, I think that you need to be honest with these questions because maybe they they consider your opinion and they can um, they can explain clearly the environment depending on the answer that you that you you get give, give them because uh, they know the environment you don't know so maybe the, the environment is not good for you or you or you or you are looking for other type of environment so it's important uh, have the things clearly from since the beginning okay very good perfect so yes I mean, it's good to say, I mean, what you expect for. It's also a good idea for you to research about the company to try to get what is the environment actually. So before you actually go there, nice. And there are some possible answers. That is going to be for uh, Francisco Eduardo. Uh, could you please read this one? Um, possible answer, teacher. Yeah, please. Uh, I read the, the parallel. Yeah, please. Uh, sample answer one. I work in business small companies. I really dislike the corporate world. Rules, deadlines, SOPS and so on. I perform best when I have a certain level of freedom to do things. Want to find innovate solution to problems you didn't even know you had and you and your guide. Uh, what's someone to just bring the follow instruction and do what they are told? They would probably not be a good fit. Uh, continue, teacher. Yes, please. Okay, sample answer two. I love working in a beautiful ener energetic environment. Do you know when you're working on a common goal with a team of people who are as passionate as you are? I like to think of my work as a second home and my co worker as family. The last company I worked at has such as an environment, an excellent of the job. I get that exact feeling about company X since the moment I walked in here for the interview. 
So I am very excited to get to know how to put you guys work. Very good. Which one do you like the most? Um, for me, uh, I think the, the better samples uh, are uh, sample number two teacher. Why? For me, um, I, I, I think the, the idea when you uh, change to the other job is for a, a, a um, phone, uh, better things. Uh, for example, better environment, uh, better teamwork, uh, better um, uh, salary. And for me, this, this hours is uh, our uh, in in this line, in this line for my for my thinking way teacher. Okay. Very good. Actually I agree. I be, I believe that the second answer is is better just because I don't like to use uh, negative words. And when you say I really dislike the corporate word, mm, well maybe it's not that good. You mind that the company is small but they want to become a corporate word, you are not going to get the job right. So the second one is more like, yes, I I I'm, I feel like I want to do this and this and this. Okay, so it's a little bit better in my opinion. Where do you see yourself in five years? That is another one that is a good one. Um, Heidi, is it working your headset? I don't know. I guess not. Yeah, we cannot hear you. Something is going on. Okay, so let's continue then. Um, let's see. Uh, you sell. Is it possible for you, you sell? Not possible. Okay, Anna Claudia. I'm here, teacher. Sorry. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Sometimes the honest answer to this is hopefully not doing this, especially with entry level jobs. Don't think the hiring manager doesn't know it, though. There are diplomatic ways to go around it. In general, the motivation behind this question is for the interviewer to assess with whether you are an ambitious person or not, an ambitious person or not, and whether you have realistic, realistic expectations for your career. Make sure to avoid any of the cliche answers such as in your seat or as the big boss man. Instead, think Realist, realistically about what next what the next step after this position is and whether it is possible to reach to reach it within the company you are applying at. Good, what do you get from this? That to answer this question, you have to be realistic about your your position and your actual skills in that moment, maybe. And if you have to, to and if you want to, to achieve or, or yeah, to achieve a new goal or, or a new position, you have to, to, to keep, I don't know, like preparing yourself or develop, develop your skills. But, and uh, not like the paragraph said, like uh, said things that maybe doesn't sound um, yeah, realist, realistic. So you have to, to think uh, what's the next step, but in babies, like in baby steps. Don't, don't, it's, it's, it's good 
to to dream and and thinking in big things in your for your career but uh, maybe if, if your boss or your manager or someone in the company ask you or ask me something like this i could i maybe answer that that in the short time i see us i don't know like the next step after my position something that match with my skills in that moment okay very good yeah actually this is a question that might be also very common so and definitely depending on what is the position that you will apply for uh, of course you want to say at least the next step right so you need to research and check what are the skills and you i mean you can say i want to develop myself and have a career here with you so very good possible answers that is going to be for for danny Okay. Uh, sample answer one, right? Yeah. Okay. Sample answer one. Within the next five years, I'd like to reach the position of a senior business consultant. During the time period, I would like to accomplish the following. Help 20 organizations improve their business, their business Create a personal network of highly specialized professionals. Learn as much as I can about optimizing and improving clients' businesses, as well as the essential of operating a company. Sample answers two. As a start, I want to learn if accounting is the right field for me. While I love what I studied at the university, I want to see if working in the field feels the same. If I do end up enjoying it, I'd like to specialize in either internal audit, auditing or forensic accounting. accounting as I really like to discover and solve problems. From what I've seen from your job at, you, you guys are hiring for both. So I hope it's going to be possible to move up from the position of an intern within the next few months. Perfect, thank you. So uh, which one do you like better? I think mm, mm, it's hard to decide <laughs> to <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> okay. um, I don't know. I think the first one. <laughs> okay. Why? Mm -hmm. Mm, because mm, because I I don't know is is something like very of of um I don't know visions about um why the what the person wants to achieve and they have a very clear goal mm, and all the um, disposition the position to learn and um help the client's business okay yeah actually actually I agree for me also is better the first one because uh, it's, it's not talking about a position or have a money or things like that. It's, it's speaking about specific things that he would like to do within the organization. So it's very nice. Good. So these are situationals. Why haven't you gotten? Uh, maybe this is not that important. Let's just skip some. 
This is a good one. Why have you switched jobs so many times? Ana Claudia. Of course. Uh, why have you switched jobs so many times? If you switch jobs in a very short period of time, two or more full-time positions in one year, the interviewer is uh, bound to ask about it. After all, job uh, hoping is one of the biggest red flags for HR managers. Uh, true, you might have had a re reasonable cause. Maybe the second company you got hired in just uh, wasn't a good culture fit to you. Well, you have to communicate that. Companies tend to be skeptical because of the following reason. You might be a job hopper. Some people tend to switch jobs the moment they get a better salary offer. You might be unqualified for the job and you quit because you couldn't deliver. Or you get bored easily and your solutions and your solution to that is quitting. So your job here is to convince the interviewers that you don't belong to any of those three categories. You need to make them realize that you'll not jump ship a few months after getting hired just because some recruiter, PMD, you PM you PM on LinkedIn with a oh, okay better, better offer. The best the best way to answer this question is to explain the reason you switched jobs. It could be one of the followings: the company culture wasn't a good fit. This happens to the best of us. Sometimes the company just isn't the right one, or the job description was misleading and you ended up doing something you either didn't enjoy or were not qualified for. You learned that you simply didn't enjoy the job and uh, are not willing to try out something different while this isn't the best potential answer. It's honest and chances are the HR manager will understand. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, very, very difficult, very different because <coughs> sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes, uh, well, yes, if you're jumping from one job to another, and in the area we were, in the call center area, sometimes happens that there are seasons that, or seasoning, seasonal, seasonally, I guess is the word, wow. seasonally positions. Uh, I remember last year, no. Uh, no, it was in 2019, I guess. There was a, an account that it will be in uh, active uh, in, at the site just for three or four months. But people working there, they just needed to take order, take order, take order, take order. And they will be like uh, earning like around $800 or $900, something like that. It was a higher salary. And some, but they just require a new hire. Uh, there were people from another call center, they were just moving for that season account. Or sometimes I remember when uh, Christmas is coming, other offices or other call center offers to double the, the Christmas bonus in order to get people new hire. And at the end, of course, they get sometimes the, the um, Christmas bonus uh, increase as they promised. But after that, it's a pain or it's a headache to achieve goals or they were not told that the next month they were doing another thing, a different thing. Uh, that could be giving like um, the... the uh, I don't know if to say the incorrect view for the HR uh, department about you. So what they can read is totally different. 
but when we explain the reasons why we move, we must be honest. And I think that it's like a very important situation to explain the culture. If we are not happy with the company culture, I guess they will understand better. Mm -hmm. But we are not get used to provide that answer as a, as an uh, that one as an answer of uh, what why we quit a company or two in one year. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you. Actually, you are very mm -hmm. right. I mean, and I mean these questions are some of those that are very important, right? Because mm -hmm. when they see a person that has many jobs in a very short period of time, of course, they want to be sure that they are not going to invest money so you leave the company after three six months mm -hmm. so it's not that good right mm -hmm. and you are right also sometimes there are companies that they offer things but i mean it's not uh, it's not just because of the money that we're working right there are many things that are mm -hmm. important good so let's check about the samples uh jose wilfredo Okay, sample answer one. The last company I got hired in just wasn't what uh, I expected. The hire manager didn't communicate the role well enough. As you already know, I'm a copywriter. I write sales company. I work with London pages, uh, email marketing and sales pages. Around a week after I start work, uh, the company, I realized that they were actually looking for something uh, completely different. They asked me to write generic blog and social media posts, uh, which is pretty far off from what I do. This was really not what I expect and not something I find interesting. Sample answer two. Well, as a story, my first job was a big co corporation straight out uh, of uh, university. Well, I did learn a lot there about software engineering uh, practices. I also learned that the huge company with lots of regulation rules and the like isn't for me. Uh, so at the end of my internship there, I decided to try working at a startup. I joined that job a lot more as I gave me a lot of freedom. When it comes, uh, comes to problem solving, I wasn't told how to do it. Rather, I was given the option of coming up with my own solution. Unfortunately, the company went building up after failing to raise money, putting my back on the job market. And here where, where our company X is pretty much the place I always want to work in. I've heard a lot about your company culture and so I'll re I really belong there. Perfect. Which one did you like the most? Uh, for me, the second one, because uh, the second one also explained us that maybe he made the, he made the, the, the correct, the correct question to to be hard because uh, he was interested in something like that very good perfect actually that is true i mean if you say i didn't like that one but this sounds like a, the best for me and i want to work here i mean you are yeah, selling that's yourself right. yeah that's right the, the first one is good but not enough to me okay very good perfect thank you so we're gonna move on to the number three in this uh, thing, Juan Miguel Brand. Okay. Why did you change your career path? If you recently changed your career path, the interviewer is sure to ask, to ask about it. Don't worry, there's nothing wrong with this. A lot of people go through a career change, career or career. Or career. Career. career, okay. A lot of people go through a career change. Some even do it several times in their lifetime. 
as long as you're good at what you do, no one cares if you were a pedi pediatrician in one year and a professional chief, chef sorry, in another. When asked this question, all you have to do is answer truthfully. Explain how your old job just wasn't for you and how the job you're applying for is so much more interesting. Okay, what do you get from this? Mm, it's about uh, why are you changing your, uh, your pathway, maybe, in your career. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and I think is, I think this is the main idea. And uh, there are some other ideas there. Uh, it's not right. No, no, it's, it's not, uh, um, it's not bad to do it. Okay. Uh, I think personally, uh, if you don't, if you don't feel realized with the, with the job that you are doing right now, and you can change this, uh, come on, do it, let's do it, okay? In order to uh, feel more uh, energized, feel more realized with the things that you really love, not, not really like, but also with the things you really love, okay? And obviously uh, there is a there is something that says if you do no if you like what, what you do or if you love what you do and you pay for and, and you get paid for that, you are doing um uh, okay uh, you are being paid for the things that you love to do and you're not working for, okay? You're, you're just like uh, having a hobby or something like that, but paid, okay? Uh, I think, like I said before, if the, if the way that you choose at the, at the beginning is not for you because you don't feel realized, and if you can change and the life uh, get the opportunities to change, uh, why not? Okay. Pretty good. Perfect. So actually that is true. I mean, maybe they want to know why you changed your career path, but it's not that it's a bad. They want to, to know, I mean, why, why did you change something that is very drastically? I mean, something that is kind of totally different. And of course, your, your answer is going to be something that is going to attract them for you to be higher, right? That is it. And there are some answers here. It says, uh, I realized that being a doctor is not for me. Why I did enjoy my three years in med school, the six year study period was too much. I wanted to start making money and help out my family way before that. So I dropped out of university and started taking online courses of, in accounting. At this point, I'm pretty good at it, having done two internships uh, so far in company X and company Y. Hmm, this is a good one. Let's check the other one simply because I enjoy doing sales much more than accounting. After five years of working as an accountant for Firmex, I decided I want to try something new. I asked my boss at the time to let me transition to the sales team and I ended up liking it and being pretty good at it. Yeah, it's like, I didn't like it. Maybe that is the, the thing, right? I, I tried it and I was doing my best, but at this point, uh, it's not for me. Good. Why did you decide to leave your previous current job? This is also related to the other ones, right? When asking this question, the interviewer wants to learn, did you have a good reason for leaving your last job? The HR manager doesn't want someone that just jumps ship to the moment things do bad. So uh, there are some examples here. So this is going to be for, let's see, Maria Alejandra. Hello, Maria Alejandra, are you here with us? Not possible, okay. Fernando. Okay, teacher. Incorrect, simple. 
Oh, well, the company started bleeding cash and was on its way to bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, okay. Correct example. I felt like it was time. I got to a point where everything I was doing felt monotonous. I learned as much as I could at this position while delivering amazing results. It was, however, time to switch to something new. Uh, did you lead on good terms? Meaning, did you go through the offboarding process, instructing your coworkers and how to take out your responsibilities? Or did you just say adios and stop showing up at work? And there is incorrect example. Things started to get really boring and the boss man was kind of mean. I totally deserve better. So I just got it then and now I'm looking for a new company. Hi. <laughs> and correct example. I didn't feel like the company's values coincide with mine. The management was too controlling and micromanaging. I prefer to have some control over my work and being able to contribute by going above and beyond my requirements. Of course, I went through the offboarding properly, meaning gave a timely resignation notice and transferred all the essential company knowledge to my replacement. Did you lead voluntarily, voluntarily or were you fired? This is a question, right? Yeah. Incorrect example. I got fired for missing work for a week without an excuse. <laughs> that is incorrect. Oh, definitely. Right. Yeah. And correct example. I was fired. Actually, the fall was in my communication skill at the time. I misunderstood my supervisor's instruction and ended ended up sharing a higher monthly spend on a on a account for the client. The losses were not more than three figures, but apparently the relation with the client was already strained, so they ended up leaving. Of course, I really took this too hard and worked very hard on improving my communication skill to ensure that I don't make any mistake of this nature ever again. Good, what did you learn from this? Uh, you try to find the 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 answer when you doesn't no you don't so you don't think think I don't know um uninteresting so because uh, the last example for example the last example say so, yeah they they got fired or he he got fired but uh, the incorrect example there is incorrect <laughs> definitely but in the second example the, maybe it was a mistake he made a mistake but uh, all people made a mistake but you 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 can learn of your mistake and try to improve your um, your gaps and I don't know that's all teacher Okay, very good. Yeah, actually, that was very good. Maybe it's a little bit risky to say, yes, I got fired. But if you say I learned from that one and it was no big deal, but of course I learned and I'm not going to do that one. Yeah, it sounds like a very good thing. And uh, yeah, there are many good tips on this one because there are many questions included. So very interesting. Number five says, why is there a gap in your work experience? Um, okay, we can check into that one. So. Let's see, Maria Alejandra, are you here with us? Okay, teacher. Okay. Um, it doesn't really mean anything. You probably have a very good reason for it. Uh, the interviewer, however, will define me, define me as about it, and you should answer adequately there's no secret and so South. Say, South. South, to answering this question you let the requ 
require know about your situation, wherever that may be. Maternity leave, health, healthy issues, caring for a sick family member, time off to pursue, pursue, pursue. pursue, pursue further education, recollecting to a different city, working on a personal project. Whichever the case may be, just explain the situation and, and brief and move, and move on. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, however, is that if you were laid up at work or you quit and had trouble getting a new job, you should be very sub, subtle about it. Subtle, huh? about it. If the interviewers know that you are struggling to find a job, you're going to give the upper, and upper hand in salary negotiation. Good, perfect. What do you get from this? Mm. Uh, maybe a different person pass or uh, try to um, change a gap when you take a time for your, uh, take care of your kids or you have a problem with your health or you have uh, other situations that you don't work in a few, um, a few or a lot of time and you need to try to um, uh, in, you you have a job because you need um uh, maybe responsibilities that you supply in your house or a uh, personal and you need to try that when you um, apply our jobs uh, maybe ask for a uh, why the reason for you don't work a lot of time or if you the abilities or you or you knowledge is um right or um, um uh, maybe that actually or with that uh, for the market Okay. Uh, because maybe if pass a lot of year and you don't give a more experience in that area, maybe you eh, como quedarse atrás. Uh, get behind. Uh, get behind that the other person that may be more younger or have more experience or pay um, no um uh -huh. or I think that may be like this. Okay, very good, perfect. So that happens. I mean, it's possible that you didn't work one, two years, for example, and maybe they can say why, why, why this happened? I mean, and of course you provide the answer, right? And if you didn't have a job and you were looking for a job but you didn't get a job, it's a good idea not to say that too much, right? So that is not good. Short answers here. I had a baby and had to take maternity leave, of course. My father was sick, so I had to be one to take care of him full time over a few months. That is a good one as well. So those might be good. Why were you fired? Um, well, that, this is similar to the one, but let's read so we can practice. Francisco Eduardo. Not possible, okay. Ramon, is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, Roxana. You sure, I, I hear the issue, sorry. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, please. Okay, number six, right? Yeah, please. 
why were you fired? Now, this is at one. Getting fired is pretty much never good. Keep in mind that we are talking about getting fired, not getting let off. There's a huge difference between the two. Getting light off means that you got let go for something that had nothing to do with your competence. And L E budget cut company downsizing. Sorry, downsizing. Sorry, Tishu. Downsizing. Downsize. Getting fired on the other hand means that you go to live for a reasonable cause. Cause in change are is probably your fault. If you got fired and the interviewer asked you about it, you should be honest. After all, they can easily check in with your previous employer. Your best shot here is to be critical about your mistake and explain what you be done to improve. Uh, continue, Tishu. Uh, yes, please. Cor uh, inquiry example. No, all this was my fault. My boss is a total tool and he hates me for no real reason. He is jailed and um, for no real reason. In the example about the interview, it's defensive. That's a very huge red flag for the HR manager. Instead, try saying something that shows that you're aware of your mistake. And for example, the main fault was his miscommunication. The interviewer was unclear about the job responsibility from what I understood. They were looking for a senior level marketer to oversee their email marketing operation. At the end of the day, Bob, the truly of the company was looking to experiment with email marketing and special specific for someone to set to set it up from scratch. Well, I did my best to deliver in the end if turned off that they niche. 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 Mm -hmm. Doesn't actually need email marketing. This was against the management vision. So that they decide to let me go. Okay. So what do you get from this? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's an interesting topic to show. <laughs> in, the inter, in the interview is is a is a serious part. <laughs> but uh, I I think the better option is to be honest. Uh, uh, that happened, uh, and is if. You, if you uh, 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 that's a mistake, uh, the very is to be honest is the better option. To be okay. to be clear or communicate that the the reason because uh, uh, the people uh, fight it to the last company. <laughs> So that is it. Actually, you are so right. The best is to be honest. Of course, you need to say I, I learned and now I worked with that and that is not going to happen again, right? And uh, well, it's very interesting this part. I don't know if you knew that one, but getting laid off is not the same of getting fired. Getting laid off means that, yes, the company says to you, well, we don't need you here anymore, but because of but the cost company downsizing. So it's not that you are not good. I mean, we need to leave people outside of the company, but it's not your fault. But if you get fired, 
that means that you did actually something that was not correct and then you got fired, right? So it's totally different. Good, good. How do you feel about working weekends or late hours? Okay, that is a good one. That is very common here in Salvador. Marcus. Okay, how do you feel about working weekends or late hours? You're gonna get asked this question in one of the following two cases. You're applying for a job that requires working odd hours. In this case, your answer is pretty straightforward. Since you're applying for such a job, you probably don't have any problem working all hours. Um, simple answer. Sure, I'm okay with working late hours or weekend as long as you let me know about, about it at least a few days in advance. Um, you're applying for just about any other type of job. Now you should look at this as, as a red flag. Is the employer just checking your dedication or are they looking for someone that's going to work 24 seven with no overtime pay? In this case, ask them to clarify what they need. Simple answer, simple, simple answer. Given enough warning, sure. Is that something I'll be required to do often? Do you offer overtime pay for this kind of situation? Good, what do you get from this? Okay, um, that we have to 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 get to get to know very well if the if the employer will how often we require to require for us to to be at late hours and yeah if we are looking for any kind of job we will be able to to apply for those kind of, of jobs, but we don't have to be over time in the in or you know, work. So we have to clarify and um, what the employer means with and uh, with our disposable ability. Or, yeah. Oh yeah, available. Yes, with that. Okay. So we have to to figure it out if they, if they mean to work 24, 24 seven hour with no over, overtime pay. And we have to, we, we can give some kind of native answer with that. And yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, actually, this is a good thing. I mean, uh, there are the two examples are the common, right? If you know already that they need you to work overtime, of course, you can say, yeah, I'm okay, because you know already. If you don't know, it's a very good idea to clarify. I mean, is that something that you do very often, every day, every weekend? And if they say, yes, do you offer pay? I mean, if you offer pay, I will be here. If you don't offer pay, you need to tell me in advance or check what we can do. I mean, Things like that. It's better to be honest at this point, of course. How would your boss or coworker describe you? Ah, okay, this is a good one. Roxana. Okay. This question is pretty much the same as what are you greatest strength? Greatest Great. strength. Mm -hmm. Great strength. The only difference is that it should be from the point of view from your boss or coworkers. Here you want to focus on your traits and achievements that you previously been praised for. After all, the interview might ask for reference. There are two lists Sorry, there are at least two ways to answer these questions. First one, describe a specific situation where you excel, excellent, excellent, excelled, excelled, thank you, at work and receive praise from your boss and coworkers. Sample answer. 
Dave said I'm super hard working. During my weekend of not one, but three, there, three of my coworkers got sick and I had to spot for them. The weekend was peak season in Nature Tech. Nat Nature Tech. Nantucket. Nantucket. Thank you. So the restaurant was getting seriously overwhelmed. 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 All of the students, we were from Bain very prepared from the season to complete panic. Had to jump between serving, basin, and line cooking. But overall, manage, manage, manage to survive throughout the weekend successfully. Two. Hey. Two. Qu quote a performance review. If you previously worked in an office job, you'll, you're probably too, all too familiar with this. Did your boss give you a glowing performance review? Make sure to mention it here. Sample answer. Well, in my last performance review in September, my boss described me as someone who takes initiative. My position as a peer manager involves constantly keeping track of our client's brand rep reputation. And if something goes wrong, dealing with it, with it as far as possible. In a lot of cases, you need to be very proactive. If you wait for your ent entry, entire, entry, entire, team to have a meeting on how to deal with the issues. It might already to be late. There were four or five different situations where I had to take charge and react to, problem, to problems, literal, literally the moment they arose. Whether it was during my work hours or not. Okay, what do you get from this? Well, um, we need to uh, identify identify some examples. For example, when uh, we need to support a special situation in our previous job or current job, and maybe when uh, we need to solve some special cases and we receive a feedback maybe or uh, we, we, we receive, um, I don't know, maybe uh, a little feedback about the situation for, from us, uh, from the boss or maybe um, from the coworkers and it's important to uh, identify that situation to share in an interview with uh, the human resources when we are applying in another job because uh, they are looking for um, details, maybe. And if we don't have uh, identified that details, maybe uh, we, we will... Um, we will have a lot of a lot of doubts, doubts, yeah, dudas, doubts, yeah, and yeah, and that's why it's important to uh, identify in the first time that situation and try to remember is not a uh, it if that situation is not common, try to remember uh, how how we solve that situation and maybe. Uh, take notes about the some feedbacks 
or some important comments about a, a third person in that case. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. So yes, I mean, this, as I said before, is kind of the same question as what are your strengths, but from the point of view of the, uh, the people that work with you, your boss, your coworkers, things mm -hmm. that, so it's a very interesting thing, yeah. The tips that they tell you to do. This one, we're not gonna check it and uh, well, we're gonna check this, but tomorrow, not today, because it's almost time to go. So we still haven't had the chance to, to do some interviews live, but we're gonna do it maybe tomorrow. My friends, so we're gonna finish and um, I'm going to check the attendance. Before I do that one, remember that for tomorrow, we need to finish everything, okay? All the platform has to be done tomorrow because Wednesday is our last day. Also, probably you have received already the InsaForb survey. Remember that the survey is going to be done on Wednesday. That is our final day. That is very important. Remember, you have experience already, but remember to have something for you to copy and paste, right? Copy and paste the numbers or the, the things that are important there. Okay, so Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Yes, teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanés. Jose Marco Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejia. Present. For you is the 101 today, Roxana. Okay. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernandez. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow in Dreaming English. Thank you, teacher. Bye bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Okay, hello, Roxanne. Hi, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Uh, here surviving. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Why, what happened? Well, to be honest, this week was very hard because I, I get some changes in my work and I have a hard switch in my work position because I need to uh, I need to give a training for a new co-workers and I need to take the training uh, for my new uh, the places I think that that is the it is the same position but it's different company so the operation is totally different so that's why uh, sometimes um i was working when when i was uh, at the english class too and it was very hard
car. I see. Yeah, that is kind of stressful. You are so right. I mean, if you're taking your own training and then you are delivering other training, I mean, that is a lot of things. So yeah, I understand but you. I'm surviving too. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, so uh, the first question I have for you is how do you feel on this class? I mean, you feel you are moving on, you are learning something. Yeah, I'm learning, but to be honest, in my case, I think that I need to be more focused. And, you know, I have been uh, with a lot of stressful, and to be honest, I, I know that I need to improve a lot of things and try to be more uh, focused in the, in the class. But to be honest, uh, I, I, I hurt uh, and I try to uh, look for in my um, lunch time or try to uh, hear some, some, something in English to improve a little. But uh, yeah, I try to stay there, but I know that I need to improve. Okay, very good, perfect. And do you have any question about any topic that we have checked? Yeah, well, the last time I was checking, well, today I was working in the platform and I check um, uh, exercise, but I don't remember the, the number, but it, it about, is about or was about nor. Nor or the, the conjunctions, the pair conjunctions. Yeah, it's a little confused. I don't remember if I was connected, to be honest. I was connected in that uh, class I, because I, I don't remember that topic. So I was uh, asked to Fernando for uh, some examples and I looking for, but to be honest, that topic was a little weird. Okay. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Sometimes the grammar is a little bit confusing because it's different, right? So um, it's something that probably we don't use in Spanish, so and that makes it a little bit difficult. But uh, if you have some questions about the platform, you can always chat with me or you can always ask me and we are going to check, okay? Okay. okay. And then in the book, you will find the explanation. Uh, yeah, I remember that we checked into that one. We made some exercises. And maybe that was the grammar that was very strong that we checked into that. Uh, but uh, of course, you can ask me any questions if you want. And okay. uh, well, speaking about your English skills, which one do you believe that is the one that you need to work more into? So for example, is it speaking, is reading, understanding, listening? Everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, to be honest, uh, well, I think that in this model, we uh, have a lot of uh, different words, words, and I know that uh, that is my um, my problem because I don't. I try to uh, use always uh, uh, maybe a common words, and I don't uh, get a new vocabulary. And I think that this model was a little hard because uh, we receive a lot of different uh, vocabulary. Well, the last time I remember that we was talking about marketing or e-commerce or something like that. So we was working uh, three models, I guess, and we are uh, familiar, familiarizando? Getting familiar. We're getting familiar with uh, some common words about that specific topic. But uh, in this model, maybe when we are talking about uh, interviews or human resources or processes or something like that, maybe uh, the paragraph or the, um, yeah, the paragraph that we read use uh, a specific, uh, maybe a, a mix is common with a specific uh, words. And that's why in my, in my case, I think that we, we uh, or I have a, a lot of um, 
travels. I think, uh, but uh, well, when I think that when we are familiar, getting familiar with uh, vocabulary, we try to read uh, fast to fast. And my, according to, to my, my, my proper analysis, my self my own, ana, ana, my my own own analysis. analysis, yeah. Uh, this model for me, it was a, a little weird because I know that in the last model, maybe I was reading more fast than... Faster. Yeah. And I don't know why, <laughs> maybe I need to practice more. And I, or I don't know, maybe I, I was working in another things, you know, I was saying that I, sometimes I was working and I tried to stay at, at, at class and maybe that's why. But uh, to be honest, I, I had in my mind that I need to improve my rhythm. Okay, very good. Okay, but the, this is a good chance, I mean, I really like you to read because this is a way for you to practice, to get more vocabulary, to get better pronunciation. So it's a good thing. You can do yourself practicing. So that is going to be a good thing for you. And remember that since this is the first advance, right? So it's going to be a little change. But I mean, your English is good. Maybe what I think is that sometimes you, you doubt it's like this or it's like this. So that's in general what happens but your english is, is kind of good i mean you are kind of fluent that's very good yeah yeah but uh well i i know that my problem is that i don't have a lot of vocabulary so i try to remind but it's it's kind of difficult because uh, in my work i don't use english and i think that is most common when you need to uh, improve share with your co-worker for example some topic or something like that but it's not my case so i need to to sometimes i need to uh, do a, a a mix between accounting and english and you know it's, it's weird yeah, but you're going well it's, don't worry so you're going it's well. not you're... an excuse just it's <laughs> this model or this and the next model model i think that is will be kind of hard but you are on your way don't worry so you are doing very well i know that i mean as you say sometimes we have the world the family many things but if you continue practicing everything will be fluent and very nice okay okay Perfect, Roxanne. It was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night.